All right, welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to be spending a little more time on the actions tab. Uh, last time we went a little bit fast, we're just trying to go for a top-down perspective on how StreamerBot works. But today we're gonna to be doing a little more focus session and we're gonna be going baby steps to try getting us to create some really fun stuff in StreamerBot. Uh, today we're gonna to be just kind of creating something really simple just to show you how this tab works and how everything interacts with each other. Uh, so I have my chat, uh, chat box on the right side of the screen. We have StreamerBot on the left side. We're gonna create a new action. I'm going to call this welcome message. We're going to create a little welcome message and I'm going to assign a group. For those that remember in the last video, we were able to assign commands a group. We're going to also assign a uh, action into a group to make things a little more organized. There's also all sorts of other things too. Uh, there's the queue, which we discussed what action queues do. It runs things one after another. There's also the ability to do random actions. We'll discuss that a little later. Concurrency, right now this basically means that if you want something to run at the same time as another thing. I kind of misspoke last video about action queues. Uh, they still run one after another, but they run so lightning fast that it feels concurrent. But if you want true concurrency, hit this check box here. I don't think that'll work if you have a, an, a, a queue set up. Uh, there's also right here, always run and exclude from action queue as well. If you want those options as well, I don't know why you would, but they're there for you. We're going to hit okay. You'll see now that this action has been organized into its own group and now we can get started. So for this action, I'm going to create a sub action. I'm going to send a message to the channel, preferred account bot or broadcaster, depending on what you have set up. And in here, I'm just going to type Thanks for stopping by. Okay. And that is going to be our little welcome message. I'm going to also set up a trigger and we're going to set this up to run off a command. Now I showed commands last time. We're going to go in here. We're going to create a new command and we're just going to do exclamation point high as the command or alternatively, we don't even need the exclamation point there to begin with. We can just do hi. And I'll set the command up to be hey as our nice friendly message and hit okay. And now if I were to type into the chat, hi, you'll see that we get our little message brought back. Thanks for stopping by. Pretty cool, right? Now let's play around a little bit with chaining these sub actions together. Just to keep things basic, let's go add a little delay here. Uh, we'll do like a, a second. We'll do a thousand milliseconds, which ends up being one second. And we'll just create another Twitch message here. Put on Twitch chat send message to channel what we'll do is we'll just type in something like uh if you like what you see don't forget drop a follow now if we type in hi in chat we'll get our first message wait a second and then we'll get the second one right over there remember earlier in the last video i mentioned how i like to use my broadcaster account to send these messages instead of using the bot account. And the reason for that is say, for example, I take one of my emotes, I'll do just a little dude guy right here. Cause he's just a little dude. We'll paste that in a chat. I'll copy this. By the way, y'all should go check out Hibby Sloth. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, did a fantastic job making this emo. It was so good. Love it. I, I can go into this chat message here. And I can just paste in that code right there. And now since I'm using my broadcaster account instead of my bot account, which means that I have all my emotes, if I type in hi again, you'll see now we get our little emote attached to the end of our message. And that's just a nice little fun flair that uh, really adds to that. Now we can chain sub actions together, but we can also call actions from within actions. And to showcase that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another action off of here and I'm just gonna call it welcome, welcome message part two. Now I'm gonna drop the queue. We don't have a queue on it, so we're fine, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put another message in here for welcome message part two. But what I'm gonna do is take this sub action we created right here, copy it. I'm gonna paste it into here. And we're gonna delete it off of here. So now what we're gonna do, if I type in hi now, You'll see we get our message, but nothing happens. So what we're gonna do, so we can actually get this to show up again, is I'm gonna come back to our first part, go to core, actions, run action. And then I can call welcome message part two. And now if I type in hi again chat, we get our first, we get our second. And now you can see the power that comes with this, right? So 
we can create an action and then call another action. So what you can do is you can have this giant action and then just call it anywhere. Say you want uh, an explosion to show up on screen and have all sorts of fun text show up and all that after someone sends a message to chat, you can configure that all right here and then just call it so you don't have to redo that every single time you want to do something like this. So it's very easy to create reusable components that you can use across the board. And what's nice is when we actually get into using arguments and commands and variables, it makes it so that the variables are still shared across the two actions when they're run concurrently with each other. So you can pass things along and use those in other actions very, very easily. Speaking of variables, we're actually gonna update one of our sub actions here to make it a little more dynamic. Thanks for stopping by is fine, but it's a little informal. Uh, we wanna make it a little more formal and friendly and welcoming. Instead of doing thanks for stopping by, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back into here. We're gonna start using variables. What variables are, is a reference that stores data. You can call a variable, for example, username, and that will, if you point to that, it'll say what the person's username is. There are many built-in variables within StreamerBot. You can go check out the StreamerBot reference. I will post that link in the description below. You can refer to that to find all sorts of variables you can use across your actions. And one of the ones we're gonna use today is username and you can get that by doing percent and then another percent sign and that encases it and says that this is a variable we're going to call and if i type in user capital n a m e what this will allow us to do is display the person's username we can also create our own variables as well but we're going to use the built-in one to show how this works if i hit okay and now if i type hi in the chat you'll see right there thanks for stopping by it's venji and if you like what you see don't forget to drop a follow a little more formal and it's just a little more welcoming. That is going to do it for this episode. That gives us a simple Twitch chat message with the introduction of doing some sub actions, routing sub actions to other actions, and also an introduction to variables. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below. And don't be afraid to reach out to me. My socials are going to be in the description below, so you feel free to reach out if you need help. And in the next episode, we'll play around with some more actions and maybe even get in some OBS stuff. But I hope this was a lot of help and I will catch you in the next video. See you guys.